Hi everybody. Raster files come in several formats, but the most useful by far is GeoTIFF. A GeoTIFF is a regular TIFF file with geographic information attached to it in a separate file. This allows GIS software to work with the file, just like vector layers. You can change the projection, align vector data, and apply other transformations to a GeoTIFF. In this video, I'll focus on the natural earth raster files, which are great for maps of the world or large areas, such as the US or Europe. Almost all of the natural earth raster files are available as GeoTIFFs, one of the reasons they're so great to use. If you're a graphic designer, you've probably worked with TIFFs before, but there's a difference here. Even though these files are TIFFs, with some additional data, working with them in Photoshop requires a few extra steps. For example, here's one of the Natural Earth 2 files. It looks a little washed out to me, so before I load it into QGIS, I'll make a quick adjustment in Photoshop. Now I'll add this file to my QGIS project. I get a warning that the CRS was unidentified. You might not think there's any problem since the file looks the same, but here's what happens when I add a vector layer. Nothing. The vector layer doesn't appear. If I try to change the projection, the map canvas goes completely blank. This is because editing the file in Photoshop broke its link to the TFW file, which contains the all-important geo-referencing information. So how can we deal with this if we want to edit the raster file? There are four options. Method 1. This is the easiest method, but it has serious limitations. Bring the raster file into QGIS, along with the vector data, and do whatever you want with the vector data. Here's a simple map with two layers, the raster one and a vector one of country outlines. Now I'll export the map using the normal SVG procedure and open it in Illustrator. The layers palette shows two layers, one for the country outlines and one for the raster file. I'll lock the vector layer and click on the raster layer. I can directly apply some effects to the raster layer in Illustrator, such as blur, painting effects, and color adjustments. Here I've applied the dry brush effect and increased the saturation. That's a really easy method, and you don't have to mess with the embedded files. Everything stays where it is. The drawback is that Illustrator's built-in effects are limited compared to Photoshop's tools. Method 2. With this method, I'll unembed the files from the Illustrator document, combine them in Photoshop, make my edits, and place the file back into the Illustrator document. This option gives you much more flexibility since you can use all of Photoshop's capabilities. Here's how to get the raster files from Illustrator into Photoshop. In Illustrator, show the links palette. It shows this. The raster file has been split into two pieces, and both are embedded into the Illustrator file. Select each of the pieces, then go to the palette menu and select Unembed. You will be prompted to save the files to your computer. Important. Illustrator will try to give both pieces the same name, so rename them to left and right or something similar. Open both pieces in Photoshop. We need to increase the canvas size for one of them so we can combine them into a single file. Pick either one and go to Image Canvas Size. The Canvas Size window will appear. Make a note of the width of this piece. They're both the same height. My right side piece is 1428 pixels wide. Select the other piece and go to Image Canvas Size. Add the width of the two pieces and enter this number in the width box. Very important. We're adding the width to one side only, so in the little grid, click on the square opposite the side to where you're adding the space. I'm adding the space to my left image, so I want the space to be on the right side of it. If you get this backwards, just undo and try again. You should see the space added to the image. Now drag the image from the other window into this one, then zoom in to line them up. Zoom in and use the arrow keys to nudge it into place. Merge the layers into a single layer and you're ready to go. In this example, the only adjustment I'll make to the file is to increase the contrast, but you can do whatever you want. Just don't change the image size or crop it. You may have noticed that the image is 72 ppi and 47 inches wide, so we can trade size for resolution. Go to Image Size and set the resolution to 300. Make sure the resample box is unchecked, 
Then click OK. Now the image is the correct size. Save the file. You can save it in any format. I usually use PSD. Go back to Illustrator. Add a new layer and move it to the bottom. Turn off the original terrain layer. Select the new layer and place the image into it using File Place. Zoom in and move the terrain image until it lines up with the vector layer. Once it's aligned correctly, lock it. And you're done. Now you can add whatever styling you want to the vector layers. Method 3. There are a few ways to edit a raster file in Photoshop without breaking the link to the geographic data so it will still work in QGIS. Here's the easiest way to do this. Open the Natural Earth file in QGIS. Here I've opened the Natural Earth 2 file. Go to Processing Toolbox. The toolbox will appear. Scroll down the toolbox for GDAL. Open this, then open Raster Conversion. Double click on Translate. The Translate window will appear. Make sure the raster layer is selected for Input Layer. Open Advanced Parameters and click the green plus sign. In the Name field, enter TFW. In the Value field, enter Yes. Scroll down to the Converted field and enter a location to save the file. Click Run. You might get an error message. Just ignore it. Your new TIFF has been created and is saved to your computer. Open it in Photoshop and make your changes. Do not change the size or resolution of the image or crop it. When you're done, save it. Do a normal save, not a save as. Go back to QGIS and bring the new file into the map. You'll get a notice that the CRS was unidentified. Ignore this. Now you can add vector layers and they'll line up perfectly. You can also change the projection if you want. Here I'll change it to equal Earth. Method 4. This last method is mostly suited for making really big maps, tabloid or larger. You can change the output resolution for raster files in QGIS, but it's a hassle and involves some math, which I know is not the strong suit for many designers. In this method, we'll use the natural earth files as straight images with no QGIS modification. This is the only method that lets you directly change the size and resolution of the raster image. It also takes advantage of the huge size of most of the Natural Earth files. Some are 21,600 pixels wide. That's 6 feet wide at 300 ppi. If you need to create a map that's 3 feet wide, this is the method to use. There's only one question to answer with this method, whether or not you want to change the raster file's original projection. Keeping the projection. The Natural Earth files use several different projections, World maps use Geographic, WGS84, Web Mercator, and Equal Earth, while the US and North America maps use Albers Equal Area and Lambert Conic. These are all suitable projections, especially for US maps. If the projection of a natural earth file is okay with you, things get really easy. The basic idea of this approach is to use the same projection in QGIS for the vector layers that the natural earth file uses. When the file is exported to SVG and opened in Illustrator, it's a simple matter of scaling the vector files to fit the raster file. Since everything is using the same projection, the raster and vector files will line up perfectly. Here's what to do. Download the natural earth file you want to use. Make sure it's a GeoTIFF. Some of them are JPEGs or regular TIFFs and are not georeferenced. Unzip the file. We need to check a QGIS setting before we proceed. Go to Settings, Options, and click on the CRS tab. Make sure these two boxes are checked. Use CRS from first layer added, and use Project CRS, then click OK. Now every file you add will match the projection of the first one you used for the project. It's a good idea to check the projection of this file, so open it in QGIS. Then click on the CRS button to open the CRS window. 
Make a note of the CRS. Here I've opened the Natural Earth 1 file. The CRS is WGS84. Click Cancel to close the CRS window. You can either leave the raster file in your QGIS project to add the vector data or delete it. It doesn't matter at this point. We only needed to check the CRS for the raster file. That's why we brought it into QGIS, so we're done with it for now. Your QGIS workspace is now set to whatever CRS the Natural Earth file uses. In this case, WGS84. Every shapefile layer you add will be automatically set to that same CRS. Add the layers you need and do whatever you want to them. Manipulate the data, add styling, whatever you want. When you're ready to export the map, click on the CRS button to double check that the projection is unchanged. If you left the raster layer in your project, delete it now. Export the map using the normal SVG process, then open the file in Illustrator. Change the page size by going to File, Document Setup, and clicking on the Edit Artboards button, then press Return. The Artboard Options window appears. Enter the file size you need. I'll use 36 by 18 inches, since that will be the dimensions of the raster file. Go to Photoshop and open the raster file. Change the size and or resolution to suit. Make sure you change the size proportionally. Here I've reduced the image size to 36 inches wide. You can also make any changes to the file, such as adding effects. Save the file in PSD format. In Illustrator, make the usual changes. Delete the bounding boxes and rename the layers. Add a new layer at the bottom of the layer stack and go to File, Place to add the PSD file. Now it's a matter of scaling. My page is now the correct size, but the vector layers are too small, so I need to scale them to fit the raster layer. First, I'll lock the raster layer so I don't accidentally move it. Since my raster file includes ocean areas, I'll delete my vector oceans layer. Now I'll select all to get all of the vector layers and scale them up. In order to make this easier, I'll pick a clear reference point. I like to use the Horn of Africa for this. I'll zoom in and move the vector layer until it lines up with the raster layer on that point. It's clear that I need to scale the vector layers up. Don't try to do this by manually scaling it. You'll never get it right. Instead, use the Scale dialog box. With the vector layer selected, press S to get the Scale tool, move the crosshair over your scale point, and Option or Alt click to bring up the Scale dialog box. Enter a number in the top field and leave Scale Strokes and Effects unchecked, then click OK. It helps to hide the edges when you do this. Go to View Hide Edges. Here I've scaled the vector layers by 140%. I'm not there yet. To scale again from the same scaling point, use Object Transform Transform Again, which is Command or Control D. This scales the layers again from the same center point by the same amount. You can keep doing this until you get close. I'm pretty close now. Now I'll go back to the Scale dialog box and change the percentage to a small amount, such as 101%. After a few of these, things look good here. But if I look at other parts of the map, I can see it's not quite right. I need to keep scaling from the scaling point and then checking things on other parts of the map until it lines up everywhere. Sometimes this means scaling by really small amounts, like 99.6 or 100.2%. After a while, you get it right. And now you can do your Illustrator magic. But before you do anything, save the file, unless you really enjoyed doing that. Changing the projection. If you want to use a natural earth file at a big size but need a different projection, there are a few extra steps. Create a new project in QGIS and add the file to the map canvas. 
Then click on the CRS button to open the CRS window. Here I've opened the Natural Earth 1 file. The CRS is WGS84. Change the projection to whatever you need, then click the OK button. Here I've changed the projection to Natural Earth 2. Now we need to export just the raster file. If we export it as an SVG, we'll have to extract it from that file in Illustrator, like in Method 2. We can avoid that by exporting it directly as a PNG. Instead of using the regular Print Layout method, go to Project, Import Export, Export as Image. Set the size and resolution for your final map. You'll have to convert pixels into whatever unit you want. I want this file to be 2 feet wide at 300 ppi, so 300 times 24 equals 7200. Save the file. Back in the main map canvas, add your vector layers. They should align with the raster layer automatically. Before you export, delete the raster layer, then go to Print Layout and Export as SVG. Open the SVG file in Illustrator and follow the same steps as in Method 3. You can open the raster file in Photoshop and make the changes you want, then place that file into Illustrator and line everything up. Now you have a really big map with the projection you want. Check out my designer's guide to creating great maps at themapguide.net slash guide and download two free chapters. That's all for now. See you next time.